Recently, I received a question from a web visitor asking me to cover reflection. So I'm going to start a series on reflection. Remember, if you have any questions, you can ask me using the form on my blog. Just go to blog.dmpcllc.com and look for the click here to ask a question button at the top of the page. Today, we're going to cover loading the DLL. Now, you'll see over here in my Solution Explorer that I've already created uh, two projects within my solution. I have a, a class library one that's going to create a DLL and my basic Windows form application, which is where we're going to be loading that DLL. Uh, the other thing that I did is I added a reference to the class library one DLL uh, in my Windows form application. Now, the only reason that I did that is so that um, the compile process will copy this DLL over into the directory that the CXE is in. Uh, if we don't do that, we won't be able to load the DLL. You have to keep in mind that when uh, .NET looks for DLL, uh, whether it's looking for something that we compiled or it's looking for something that we're using reflection with, it's going to look for that DLL in the same directory as the EXE, uh, look in any of the subdirectories that exist under that EXE, or it's going to look in the global assembly cache. Uh, and since this is a simple example, we're not going to put it in the global assembly cache. Uh, we want it in the same directory as the EXE. That's just the way this works. Um, but this is, has nothing to do with average. If I took this uh, reference out and compiled the EXE, the, the EXE is going to compile just fine uh, without this. And you can test that on your own. In my Windows Form application, I've already put in a, a button and I've created an event handler. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do is go up here. Uh, I had this using uh, system reflection namespace uh, so that we can access the uh, the reflection classes and then we're going to go and declare a variable first thing here of assembly and we'll just call it my assembly uh, the unfortunate thing about uh, demos is you can't have very creative names because you know they are what they are the next thing we want to do is we want to assign the class one assembly the class one dll that we just created uh, to the my assembly. So my assembly equals assembly load class library one, and that's minimalist application. What we do want to do here is put try block around, try catch block around this. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, for some reason that DLL is not there, you don't want the application to blow up in the user's face. So we'll do our, our basic catch routines here. And we're going to have it just throw up a message box. And we'll use message. And that's all there is to it. We'll go ahead and run this now. And let's go back real quick here and set a breakpoint. And click on that button, and now we'll step through the code. And you'll see that it's actually loaded the assembly for us. And prove that it doesn't hit the catch. And that's all there is to it. Now, there is one final thing I want to point out here, and that is uh, if you try to run this code uh, in an ASP.NET application, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to find the DLLs um, properly because they're, they're not really in the same location as the ASP.NET EXE that's uh, actually running uh, your website. Uh, so there's some tricks there. Uh, fortunately, uh, in ASP.NET, uh, we don't even have to do this load DLL routine. Uh, what we do instead is just uh, there's an API that lets call the class directly uh, under ASP.NET. It goes out and, and finds it for us. Uh, but if you're doing a Windows application, then you need to go through this step and, and load the, uh, the DLL into your application before you actually load any of the classes.